my colleague from Wisconsin, my neighboring state, talk about her personal and family experience with health care. I think every one of us has a story. It's our own personal story, or certainly know somebody, don't we, in our families who has a medical history, tells a story of whether or not they had the proper care at the proper time, whether the family could afford it. And then the big question, can you buy health insurance? If you have a child with diabetes, if you have a wife who has suffered cancer and survived, you know, can you buy health insurance? And the interesting thing, I'll bet you found this because I know you're traveling all over your state of Wisconsin, this issue doesn't go away because people's worry over it doesn't go away. They're worried about whether they can afford to buy good health insurance. They're worried about whether they can afford to buy prescription drugs. It's that insecurity, that economic insecurity about health care that really continues to make this the biggest issue year in, year out here in America. I thank my colleague from Wisconsin for telling her story and for really giving my speech. So I'm going to condense it uh, and just say a few things she might not have touched on. Uh, and I thank her for her contribution earlier today. It happened in my life at a very early age. Um, my wife and I got married. I was in law school. God sent us a beautiful little girl, and she had a very serious medical problem. We were living here in Washington, D.C., and didn't have health insurance. And I want to tell you, you've never felt more helpless in your life than to be a new father with that brand new baby who desperately needs medical care and not have health insurance. I'll never forget it as long as I lived. I lived in such fear from that point forward of not having health insurance coverage that I did crazy things, getting health insurance at two different places of employment just to make sure I never lost it. It scared me that much. And I still remember that fear. And I wonder if the people who are debating this issue about Affordable Care Act ever lived through it themselves. Because if they did, they wouldn't be standing here saying we can do away with the Affordable Care Act. We know what happens if you eliminate the Affordable Care Act. Millions of Americans lose their health insurance. Millions of Americans find health insurance not affordable. Millions of Americans are desperate for protection, no longer have it, and can't access the most basic quality health care that every American should expect. So we had this debate, a new president came in and said, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of Obamacare, get rid of the Affordable Care Act. Well, the obvious question was, could he do it? It looked like he might be able to. The Republicans controlled the House and the Senate, and when they were in the minority, at least when they're in the majority with the Democratic president, at least on 50 or 60 different occasions, the House Republicans voted to abolish Obamacare. It was pointless because the Senate wasn't going to take it up and the President would never sign that bill into law. But you knew what the sentiment was. We're getting rid of it. We're getting rid of it. And we heard about that year after year. We passed the Affordable Care Act in 2010 and for year after year all the Republicans could say would get rid of it, get rid of it. Then came that moment when figuratively the dog caught the bus and they had an opportunity to present on the floor of the United States Senate an alternative. What is it? that you want to replace the Affordable Care Act with, we said to our Republican friends, you're elected to this body as legislators, let's see your legislation. Turns out they didn't have any. They just wanted to make sure Obamacare was gone. They couldn't find a replacement. And they couldn't answer the basic question as to how they would provide health insurance or affordable health insurance for the millions of people who would lose coverage. I remember the night early in the morning it was, when we had the vote, the vote on whether to Ob eliminate Obamacare. Two Republican senators had already voted with us, but the critical third vote walked in that door, and his name was John McCain, stood in that well and gave a no sign with his thumb, and that was it. The Affordable Care Act lived for another day. Thank goodness he did it. Thank goodness he and two of his colleagues had the courage to do it to stand up and say, if you can't replace Obamacare with something better, for goodness sake, stick with it. Fix it. But that didn't happen. After that vote, there was a determined effort at every level of the Trump administration to do away with Obamacare. If they couldn't kill it on the floor of the Senate, they were going to kill it in many different ways. They limited the period of time when you'd signed up to renew your health insurance. 
They wanted to have fewer and fewer days available, hoping fewer and fewer people would take advantage of it. They eliminated the navigators, the advisors who helped people pick the right health insurance plan. They didn't want to give advice. They closed down the telephones to the agencies where people would call saying, well, what's my right here under the Affordable Care Act? They did everything they could think of to eliminate Obamacare and make it more difficult for people to sign up for it. But still, people signed up. Many people realized it was their only chance, their only chance to get health insurance. So the Trump administration and Republicans in Congress are determined to this day to get rid of it, and they have a new approach. If they can't kill it outright in the Senate, and they can't kill it by President Trump's tweets, they're going to kill it in court. Here's what they decided to do. 20 attorneys general, starting with Texas, and I see my friend from Texas on the floor, the leading attorney general is from Texas, filed a lawsuit. And here's what they said. It's unconstitutional to say that you cannot discriminate against people because they have pre-existing conditions. Now, those are three negative words, so let me try to translate this Helsinki style into something you might understand. What they basically said is, we don't believe the Constitution can stop an insurance company from discriminating against people with a medical history. And we're going to court to prove it. And they have, with the support of the Trump administration. They're trying to find a way to eliminate the protection of people with pre-existing conditions so that they can buy affordable quality health insurance. What an amazing mission that these attorneys general and this administration want to find a way to deny health insurance coverage to millions of Americans or make it so expensive they could never afford it. What are they thinking? Don't they represent the same flesh and blood Americans as everyone else? Don't they represent families as I do and all of us do who have someone in their family with a medical history? Why, I guess a third of American families qualify for that. And yet they want to say those people should be discriminated against. Why? Because of the misfortune they had of being born with a congenital birth defect or the problem they had because they conquered cancer but always worry about it coming back. These are the things that my Republican friends say, well, that's the way it goes. Good luck in the insurance market. We're not going to protect you. And they say what it's all about is choice. It's pretty easy to have good choices in life when you're healthy or wealthy. But if you don't fit in those two categories, your choices are extremely limited. And people find themselves with only bad choices if they're not healthy or wealthy and they don't have the protection of the law. They find health insurance premiums they cannot afford. And when they find a premium they can afford and start to look at the health insurance policy, it turns out it doesn't cover much. They also find themselves in positions where, as I mentioned earlier, someone in the family has a medical history. The wife has a medical history. You can't buy a family plan that you can afford for the rest of the family. That is the reality of the world the Republicans envision us moving to. Oh, it may be some great economic market model, but it doesn't work in reality. Not in the reality of people who are born with illnesses they have no control over and who spend their lives fighting them and need a helping hand. The Affordable Care Act gave them that helping hand. The Trump administration and the Republicans in Congress have been determined from the beginning to put an end to this protection, to eliminate health insurance for more and more Americans, and to make it a unaffordable for so many families. Is that why they ran for Congress? Is that why they ran for the Senate? To go home and say, well, sorry folks, but because of my principles, you don't get health insurance. You can't afford the health insurance that's being offered to you. Or you can buy a junk policy that just won't be there when you need it. Is that what America's all about? Interesting to me, and I'll close with this, the Chicago Medical Society represents the doctors in the greater Chicagoland area. I've come to know it. It's one of the best medical associations in our state. More progressive than most, more thoughtful than most. I really salute them time and again. They did a poll of their members and they asked them, where do you think this is going? Well, first they said, we believe that people have a right to quality, affordable health care. These are doctors, a right to quality, affordable health care. And second, they said there are programs that work like Medicare, programs that people trust. The premise behind Medicare is very basic. If you are eligible age, you get health insurance. We make sure of it. 
and we guarantee to you that you're going to get quality care through a government-run insurance program. There are a lot of Republicans who'd like to see Medicare and Medicaid go away too, but America wouldn't. America believes in it. And I believe in the principle behind both of those plans that as Americans, we should care for one another, give each and every family a chance, and make certain at the end of the day that health care is not just a privilege for those who happen to be wealthy. Mr. President, I yield the floor.